So this is it. Last day of BronyCon 2018. I'm a little sad that it's over. It's almost over. But the most important thing that the thing is, is that I had a good time. You know, the room share was kind of a bitch, but you put up with it and you persevere. And uh, we're gonna get through the rest of the day, have a little bit of fun afterwards, and then go home. And most of this stuff will be uploaded probably during uploaded during the week. So, so. That's the kind of acting you need to do. You have to you have to wreck yourself to basically get the emotions out to get it on tape so that that can get animated. If you're not tired when you're done with a recording session, you've done it wrong. Okay. <laughs> that five hour session, I was done. I was a wreck. That's like I, I, I went and took a nap because I just couldn't deal with life at that point. I was done. And industry standard is four hours. Four hours is it. But we were so close to being done, I said, let's just, just roll. All we had was like the ending few scenes. I said, let's just get it done. So we did the whole thing instead of coming back later. And four hours is all they can have you on a union job. Okay, so four hours is it. So by that point, your voice is wrecked. Yeah. Especially if you've been doing like shouting scenes or something. Oh screaming. yeah, uh, video games is the worst. Because those, those union um, rules did not extend to video games until only recently. So people would go in and do a 12 hour session of doing nothing but screaming. And basically be wrecked for months. Yeah, if you break, it's the same with any job. If you break your tools, you can't do your job. And if your tool is your throat and your voice, if you wreck it, you've got no income. There's a very famous thing where Celine Dion was, was having trouble with her voice. And she, that's, she's a singer, that's, that's her money. She didn't talk for three months. She had a piece of paper and a pad and she'd write everything she needed to say for three months. She didn't talk. Her doctor said, no talking. And she took it off heart and she didn't say a word for three months. And then she was fine. But yeah, you can basically blow up your vocal cords and have to have surgery to get them fixed if you don't watch what you're doing. And nothing, warm up. Yeah, warm up. You, there are certain things like trigger words and uh, trigger sentences to bring up accents and specific voices. But irrespective of those, you do need to warm up your voice before you record. Because otherwise, one, the first bit of recording you do is, is going to be rubbish uh, and it's going to be unusable. Because by the time you get into your swing and you're giving a good performance, you're halfway through the recording. So do vocal warm-ups. The kind of thing that you get in theatre, um, theatre programs always show you warm before you go on stage, but that's perfectly applicable to voice acting, because it's still acting. I think people have to get this distinction of, it's not just doing silly voices, it's acting. It's the same job as people who are on screen. It's actually harder, because you have to act in the silly voice. Yeah. So you have to stay in the silly voice and then put tremor or passion or whatever into the silly voice. So you're not just acting with your own voice, which is easy, or if you ask me. But if you're like in this really weird voice, then you have to give it the weight of the scene on top of doing the silly voice and keeping it the entire episode, which is the yeah. hardest thing in the world. Especially oh if you're doing a silly voice, you still have to do it so you're taken seriously. Yeah. And Andrea Lippmann as Pinkie Pie. You still believe every emotion, even when they are not the typical happy bubbly, because she's managed to maintain the silly voice, but also insert emotion into it. That is hard. Who, who saw who saw the the Susan episode? Right, Pinky's up in Yak Yakistan, and she is wrecked. She's <laughs> devastated. She's eating ice cream like it's scotch. Right. <laughs> angry, she's like depressed, that comes through even though it's Pinkie Pie in the same voice. And then the same episode she's doing Fluttershy at the same time, who's concerned. And you feel the concern through Fluttershy, and you feel the desperation through Pinkie Pie in the same freaking recording. They, and you can tell they did those in the same room at the same day. MLP is, is particularly impressive for just people being able to act opposite themselves as completely different voices. When I first got to the show, I did not realize how small the voice cast is because they are so good at what they do. And, yeah. And, and another thing about warm-up, it's you know, just not this, it's this. You know, because you're doing a lot of movement when you're actually acting. So when I want to warm up, I'm actually doing calisthenics. I do push-ups, I do jumping jacks, I do sit-ups, I do everything up here to get this all those Tongue exercises. You will look stuff. stupid. Just, just. You're gonna look good. stupid. <laughs> but it'll be worth it. If you go to YouTube and go to like singers warm ups.
all this weird stuff because your tongue is a muscle. It has to be warmed up just like any other muscle in your body. Just like your neck, just like your back, just like anything. And if you don't warm it up, if I don't do a warm up, if I just have to do like three or four lines, and sure enough, I don't warm up, I'm good for maybe 15 minutes, that's it. But if I have to do a book recording, I do the complete warm up, I'm good for a couple hours. But if I don't warm up, I'm done in 15 minutes because the body says, oh, you've used it. So physical, it sounds daft, but physical fitness and just like your basic level of fitness can control how long you can record well for. Is breathing control, especially for voice acting, breathing control is so important. But you don't want to be going <laughs> when you're just doing a basic voice, just because you've got half an hour into a recording and you can't cope with it. And how many people, when you take a, a large breath, when you take in a large breath, that your your back goes wrong? This is your airbox, not this. This is your airbox. So if you need to take a long breath for a long sentence, you go. Feel that airbox up. And then you can talk, oh, this is just coming out really slowly, and that's, your, your, your voice starts from your toes, and it goes up. So your, this is your airbox down here. This supports the lungs. Especially if you're monologuing. You don't want to get yes. halfway through a monologue. No, I'm going to do a monologue. <laughs> yeah, but you, you have that one part of the sentence where you've just realized that you're running out of air, and you can't get the emotion. You should have forced words out, which just, this is a personal thing. It took me a very long time to learn. I'm still not an expert at it, but where you put your breaths in a sentence so that you don't break up the line and it sounds really odd, pay attention to where punctuation is, but also pay attention to what sounds natural when characters, when people are talking. That's really, really good. And, some, and, and narration or voice acting is like singing, right? If you say you're doing karaoke or singing a song on the radio, you you hear the bounce of the ball in the in the in the syllables and how it flows. Sometimes you'll be doing a part and it just don't flow any way you do it at all. The words don't work. And sometimes you have to go back to the author and say, "Look, I can't do what you want me to do with this punctuation because it doesn't work phonetically or doesn't flow and sounds stupid." Here, here's my recording, three different ways. I can't make it work. Rewrite it, please. And sometimes they do, and say, oh, yeah, I can't tell. Because when they write it, they're thinking about up here, right? Anybody can read anything, and that just gets translated in your brain. But when it starts coming out of your mouth, it's different. So sometimes it just doesn't work lyrically, and sometimes you have to have it rewritten. And most authors or, or people who are doing projects will understand that and rewrite it and get the same context. Do we have any questions? No, nobody has it. Oh, all right, go ahead. You were talking about uh, voice and stretch and all that. What do you recommend for recovery afterwards? Is there any sort of drink? Don't talk. Yeah. Lots One, lots don't talk. Water. Two, room temperature water, not cold, room temperature water. Or throat coat tea with a bit of honey and lemon. And throat coat tea is the most amazing thing in the world. It is. It has just the right stuff for what's going on in here. And what you do is you just take a sip, sit in here for a few minutes and warm up, and then you swallow. Some people gargle with it. You can do that if you wanted to. But throat coat tea is wonderful stuff, but especially when you're doing voice acting, this needs to be warm, so don't drink cold drinks. You don't want to chill down the dead things you just warmed up. And nothing carbonated. And nothing not carbonated. Not during it, time. not one filter. And that, that's always great when you're halfway through a really romantic line and go, but also, um, it does affect your throat and it affects um, how well you can make sounds. Yeah. But afterwards, it will make your throat feel really good. Because I've done this, people know this, I'm addicted to Pepsi-Max. But um, if you are drinking something carbonated after you've had a long recording session, it will actually exacerbate any problems uh, rather than fix them. Yes, and try to stay away from alcohol. Everybody knows that I'm the cider guy, right? I drink cider all the time, I don't anymore. I drink I have like one or two a week because I like it. Or I'll find a really cool cider that I want to try, so I'll have one. Because it affects this badly. Okay. No alcohol, lots of water, be very hydrated. If you go into a session unhydrated, you won't get through it. Because a lot of this moisture, you'll get the in everything you do because your body is trying to moisten itself because it doesn't have enough water in it. 
And regarding hydration, stay away from anything dairy before you record. Yes, no dairy. Because all it does is create mucus. And, and that's so hard to shift for a recording session. Like, let's think, like, um, if your blood sugar is low, it can't be candy, it can't be chocolate that you have to push it back up. Because that will, it will make it so that you, you're, you could write off for a whole recording session. You could record for four hours, let's do it back and go, well, I've got to do it all again because it was over. I've lost entire weeks because I had ice cream. Because I, I, I let go, I had ice cream, and I lost an entire week waiting for my, my voice to get back because the mucus wouldn't go away no matter what I did. So. And, and, it, and it is, it's build up. If you regularly have lots and lots of dairy products, lots and lots of chocolate, milk, um, you've got to be aware that you've got to stop it a certain amount of time before you want to record for a long time. It's, it's preparation. Any other questions? We have musical company over. Yes. That's why you see all the voice actors around here with the grill. They're always doing this with their hands. With the grill. The voice actors. And this, this happened at um, Nightmare Nights. I hadn't seen Andrea Lippin in over a year. And Andrea and I are friends. It's Sunday. I've gotten the death play. And I know for a fact, I just want to say hello to her, just goodbye, and that's it. She's in the green room. And I knock on the door, I said, can I say goodbye to Andrea? And I told her, look, she started walking more. I said, don't, don't come near me, I'm sick. But I just wanted to say goodbye. And she, and she was like, for me to you. And she said, oh, thanks for, thank, thank you. Thank you for not getting near me. I said, hey, I understand. So if you're sick and you want to see these people, Take their job into account that you love. Don't go near them. Because if they get sick, they can lose thousands of dollars by not going to work. And an actor missing a session is thousands of dollars. And then the, the production has to rebook them into another session. They have to pay for studio time, all that stuff. So if you really respect these people and you're sick, stay away from wear a mask. You don't, you don't want to. You don't want. You, it's a level of selfishness. You don't want your selfishness to affect um, their reputation in their industry. Yeah, and their livelihood. And their livelihood. A lot of these actors, like, that's all they do. Bill Newton, all he does is act. He has a girlfriend who works, but he acts. If he doesn't book a job, he don't eat. Right? Some of the other ones, like Lee, Lee Tobar and, and uh, all those guys, have book jobs because they've been in the industry so long people know their voices and they get booked almost every other week but people who are new to it like Bill and some of these other people are only getting booked once a month once every once or twice a month and that's their livelihood don't get them sick please okay we've been told that we are going to be moving across for yeah moving across two tables for uh just tell us you want to stay here uh, anybody want something signed or something yeah. like that or something it's like that? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go there. I'm gonna take a table and she's gonna take a table. Yeah. And we're gonna uh, individually meet you guys, shake your hands, sign in whatever you want, and we'll be over there for about ten minutes.
We're just gonna do this for now. said, this is the one script I wrote for My Little Pony that didn't get made, but you will recognize elements of it because they remade it as Rarity Investigates. Ooh. Mine was called... <laughs> right. 
The Rainbow Confession. <laughs> Any Muppets fans? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Better than Rarity Investigates, right? <laughs> so let me a little backstory on this script. I've been pitching this logline from the very beginning. Rainbow Dash is accused of a crime she didn't commit. I just love that as a story idea. So I pitched it, pitched it, pitched it, and finally I got to do it, and then they killed it. <laughs> so it says there, December 16th, 2013. I have not read this since then. So it's <laughs> entirely possible this is really bad and they should have killed it. We'll find out together. We'll see. We're gonna see what happens. Wait till the end, man. Wait till it's bad. Okay. Come to answer to a question that nobody asked. <laughs> So, I'm, I, I don't know how else to do this except to just read it to you, which is a little awkward because it's a screenplay, so you can read along, that'll help. But you just have to kind of imagine, you know, the things I'm, I'm saying here. So, here we go. A teaser is the little bit that happens before the opening title. So this is the teaser. We open at the Ponyville train station. Twilight Sparkle stands next to a porter who's holding her bag. She's anxious and he's bored. And she's all freaked out. She's like, wait, did I remember to pack all five volumes of Maristophanes? She's thinking, thinking, I did, I must have. The porter starts to walk away. But what if I didn't? The porter stops. I know for a fact I packed the first four volumes, didn't I? He sets the bag down and waits. He's so bored right now. She's freaking out. Applejack, Fluttershy, Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, and Rarity are also there. Now, Twilight, you don't need... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, Twilight, you don't need none of that fancy stuff on this trip. This weekend's all about relaxing. Oh, I do so wish Rainbow Dash and I could join you girls. I've always wanted to try the healing waters of the Crystal Empire's hot springs. In the background, the porter attempts to take Twilight's bag, but she grabs on and then they start fighting. This is the back. Fluttershy, we wish you could come too, but you'll have fun in Canterlot. Fun? At a business meeting? Hardly. I'm afraid this weekend will be quite a bore. So this is all really boring exposition. The point is, they're all going their separate ways. So that Rarity is the only one who can save the day. Oh, no. <laughs> Rainbow Dash, oops. Speak for yourself. Us reserves are helping out with the Wonder World's Parade of Legends. I'll be hanging out with the best flyers ever to touch the sky. That's called exposition, that's bad writing. <laughs> Rarity shoots her a look, but Rainbow Dash misses it. Next stop, Crystal Empire. That's us, y'all. Twilight and the Porter are in a full-on tug of war now. And Twilight's like, no, I have to go repack! <laughs> Fluttershy gently coaxes the bag from Twilight's grip. Remember, Twilight, this weekend is all about helping you relax from all the stress you've been under. That I should have mentioned, this is middle of season five now. So she's a princess, she's freaked out. That's the context. Uh, it never got made, so it would have been where Rarity Investigates is. Replace this for that. Uh, the porter scowls and drags the bag to the train. Pinkie Pie's tiny bag is so dangerously overstuffed, it's like doing this. It's vibrating. <laughs> She's like, the key is to pack light. Like me. <laughs> Boom, the bag explodes in a hail of confetti. <laughs> Twilight screams and bolts onto the train. Applejack, Pinkie Pie! Don't worry, I packed three more just like it in case that happened. <laughs> So the joke here is that Pinkie packed four bags of confetti for her trip. <laughs> Nothing else. That's Pinkie Pie. They board, leaving Rainbow Dash and Rarity waving goodbye on the platform and the train starts to pull away. Rainbow Dash, I don't get it. Why would this weekend be boring? Isn't this your, isn't your business meeting with Sapphire Shores? It's called tact, darling. It's important they know we want to be with them. Another train pulls in. All aboard the Canterlot Express. Even though we're about to have the best weekend ever! Then Rainbow Dash and Rarity do a little happy dance. And we fade out, my little pony. So that's the one. No, you're gonna eat into my time, stop. Pretend the main title's out. Now we're into act one. So, everybody's on board, right? The, uh, we had to separate the characters so that Rainbow Dash and Rarity are the only ones going to Canterlot. Doesn't really matter what the others are doing. Act one, fade in. We're at Canterlot Stadium in the day. The stadium is buzzing. There's crews preparing the stands. The concessionaires are setting up tables. The media is interviewing the Wonderbolts. 
Rainbow Dash in uniform, so she's a Wonder Worlds reserve, stands at attention with the other reserves as Spitfire stalks down the line. Listen up, reserves. The legends will be arriving any minute. Rainbow Dash can barely contain her excitement. Your job is to help them with anything they need, and if something uh, happens during tomorrow's performance, you'll step in and perform in their place. Happens, ma'am? So Spitfire's being really cagey right here. Cagey. <laughs> Uh, you'll see. These are the best of the best, but some of them have been around for a long, long time. Gasps and reserves. All heads start to turn, and in slow motion, the Wonder Bowl's legends appear. Hobbling, frail, ancient ponies. <laughs> some have walkers. Rainbow Dash cannot contain her inner fangirl. That's Cyclone Spinner! She broke every high altitude flight record that's ever existed! Cyclone Spinner hobbles over to Crepit and Senile. <laughs> And one of the reserves is like, I bet all she breaks now are hits. <laughs> Spitfire motions to reserve number two, who joins Cyclone Spinner. And that's Blue Skies! He's so precise he can separate the colors of a rainbow! Another reserve escorts the old codger away. <laughs> no way! That's Wind Shear! He holds the record for the tightest hairpin turn in recorded history! Spitfire's hoof aims squarely at Rainbow Dash. Me? Me? She shoots forward to greet Windshear, a once imposing Pegasus now on the backside of his career. Thinking, pa! <laughs> Rainbow Dash salutes, and he scowls down at her. Knock that goofy grin off your face. You've got to earn the right to smile. <laughs> he, he's that guy. He stalks off, and she chases after her like an excited puppy. She's so happy. He tries to ignore her as he inspects the stadium progress. By the way, I love this version of Rainbow Dash. I love her. I love when she's when she like lets her toughness go away and you see what's yeah. beneath it. Fangirling. <laughs> Fangirl. I'm your biggest fan, Mr. Shear. I have all your Wonder World's trading cards. Is that so? He coughs lightly. <laughs> On it! She bolts to a concession tent and knocks the concessionaire aside as she fills a cup of water. He lands in a bowl of sloppy alfalfa dip. Hey! Sorry, no time to apologize. She <laughs> Which obviously would take a longer to say than sorry. But she did say sorry. Yeah. Now that's even funnier. <laughs> sorry, no time to apologize. This is a really good line. <laughs> she, she races off, not noticing the anger on his face. When she off, when she, uh, uh, typo, when she offers the cup to Winshear, he looks down at it with scorn. He nods to some horse tack that's hanging up. Tell him to move that gear. One bad updraft, it'll tangle us up like rope calves. Rainbow Dash blasts away, and she screeched to a stop in front of a worker. Move this tack! Don't you know how dangerous this is? But I only set it down for a minute. No excuses! Or do I need to talk to your supervisor? She flies off, not seeing the anger on the worker's face. This is all important stuff, you guys. <laughs> she rejoins Windshear, who scowls. Did I mention you're one of my biggest idols? Your two-degree hairpin turn is the greatest record in Wonder Bowl's history. And for the first time, his crusty exterior shows cracks. He's actually kind of like, oh, you know my records. You know my record, whoa! You know about my record? Of course I do. I've been trying to do that turn since I was a filly. Almost got it, too. Most youngsters think retired Wonder Bowls should put out to pasture and never thought of again. Not me. I think you're one of the greatest flyers of all time. He looks down at her with grudging respect. Thanks. Her exuberance takes over for her common sense. Ooh, let me show you how close I am. Before he, before he can respond, Rainbow Dash zooms across the open air stadium, building speed, determination on her face. And like bouncing off an invisible wall, she rockets back the way she came. She doesn't notice that she nearly slammed into a journalist who falls into several others. Pencils fly into the air. The journalists sit up, furious. Rainbow Dash lands next to Windshear. Through his gruff exterior, he can't quite believe what he's just seen. That must have been a four, five degree turn. Not bad, huh? Windshear puts his trademark scowl back on. Enough, where's the launch pad? Rainbow Dash, basking in that tiny sliver of approval, happily follows. Behind them, angry ponies glare. Who's going to play Windshear? I don't know, me. <laughs> Some rub sore bits, others wipe stuff from their faces. That's all very important later. Okay. <laughs> We've now we're at the uh, Canterlot Barracks in Rainbow Dash's room at night. Rainbow Dash, still in uniform, paces inside the Spartan Barracks room. There are two tiny bunks and nothing else. Rarity, face covered in cream, tries to get comfortable. These sheets can't be more than 100 thread count. They're ghastly. <laughs> How can we even think about sleep? She checks herself out in a small wall mirror. 
I'd do anything to fly with those legends tomorrow. Rarity slips a mask over her eyes. Fantasize quietly, won't you? Oh. I want Sapphire Shores to look at the bags I've designed, not the ones under my eyes. Oh. Rainbow Dash scowls and heads for the door. I'm too hyped up to sleep. I'll see you later. Exterior barracks. Continuous. Rainbow Dash steps outside and closes the door. Someday, I'll be a Wonderbolt's legend, and then every pony will know my name. And she flies off into the night. The next day, yeah, we'll do questions at the end. Let me just read the whole thing. Exterior, Canalize Stadium, day. This is the next day. Rainbow Dash, in uniform, stands with Rarity, who's all dolled up like Audrey Hepburn. It's the, this is the big day for both of them. I can't believe I'm at the Parade of Legends. Someday it'll be me flying up there. All in due course, my dear. Due course? I'm probably the best flyer in Canalot right now. Several reserves nearby take note of what she said. She has insulted them without even knowing it. <laughs> Just then, one of the organizers races up frantic. Rainbow Dash? Where's Rainbow Dash? That's me. Safety checks are starting, and no pony seen wind shear. If he's not here in ten minutes, you're up. Rainbow Dash gets stars in her eyes. Me? You mean I get to fly with the Wonderbolts Legends? <laughs> Rarity. Oh, I do hope he's all right. I get to fly with the Wonderbolts Legends! <laughs> now she's just too hyped up to even be concerned. The reserves are aghast at her thoughtlessness, celebrating the misfortune of one of the legends. I've got to run to my meeting, but I should be back in plenty of time to see your debut. They do another little happy dance. The reserves watch Rainbow Dash, and they're not happy. Now we're at Sapphire Shores condo, daytime. <laughs> Rarity sits with the one and only Sapphire Shores. They are surrounded by sample bags. I can't remember how she talks. Good afternoon, Miss Rarity. Okay, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Girl, these bags you designed are not of this world. She holds up a bag. It changes color as she turns it. Silver in the light and gold in the dark? Sensational! <laughs> it's a new dyeing technique I've been trying out. And this one, that's the silkiest silk I've ever seen. And it's entirely waterproof. I found a supplier right here in Canterlot who makes it. How about this one? This one's my absolute favorite. I created that weave myself. It can hold 10 times more than an ordinary woolen bag. Sapphire Shores gives a delighted hearty laugh. The Sapphire Shores Collection by Rarity. This partnership is going to be amazing. She raises a glass. Rarity clinks it. With my designs and your name, we'll take Canterlot by storm. Forget Canterlot, we'll take all of Equestria. Yeah. The two laugh the laugh of lottery winners. <laughs> <laughs> Exterior Canterlot Stadium later. Rarity, who's still buzzing from her amazing meeting, arrives just in time. The lights begin to twirl. The trumpets blast a fanfare. Fillies and gentle colts, welcome to Cantalot Stadium. And we're on Rarity, very excited. Let's give a warm welcome to the greatest flyers ever to grace our skies, the Wonderbolts Legends. And the oldsters blast off into the sky. They may not be as fast or agile as they once were, but they can still fly. And we're on Rarity, she's watching the sky and she's looking very troubled. Cyclone Spinner! Cyclone Spinner does a little dive and twirl to huge applause, then returns to the formation. Blue skies, more crazy applause. Blue Skies breaks away, does a thing, comes back. Windshear! Windshear swoops away from the others and buzzes the crowd, causing bit, lots of oohs and ahs. Windshear? But isn't that supposed to be Rainbow Dash? Oh, the poor deer will be so disappointed. As the parade of legends continues, Rarity approaches some of the Wonder Bowl's reserves who are standing at attention. Pardon me, sis, but have any of you seen Rainbow Dash? That traitor! If there's any justice, she's in the brig. What? She tried to sabotage Windshear so she could fly in his place. That's about as low as it gets. Yeah, she deserves to be banned from the Wonder Bowls for the rest of her life. Rarity staggers away, emotions swirling through her head. Banned from the Wonder Bowls for life? Dun, dun, dun. Fade out. Commercial for Gak. <laughs> And we're back for Act 2. Questions at the end. Let me read the whole thing. <laughs> Interior Candlelight Brig, day. The brig resembles a stable, where each prisoner has their own stall. I'm trying to do some horse things here. <laughs> Rarity stands outside Rainbow Dash's cell. They say you sabotage Windshear so you could fly in his place. What? But I'd never do that. I know you wouldn't, darling. I believe you to the ends of Equestria. Hey, keep it down over there. Don't worry. I'll get word to Twilight right away. No, you know how stressed out she is. Something like this could put her right over the edge. And besides, the trial's tomorrow. They share a meaningful look. Uh, I need you, Rarity. You say you believe in me? Well, I believe in you too. 
With this vote of confidence, Rarity sets her job. I'll do it. As soon as I slip into something more investigatory, I have a rat back in the room that simply screams justice. So that was kind of a meaningful exchange where she says, I need you, Rarity, and that's important later. Interior Candlelight Barracks, this is now in Winchester's room. Rarity enters the crime scene. It's just like Rainbow Dash's room, but with only one bunk. The detective, a portly schlub named Gumshoe, is processing the scene. Isn't that a great pony name? Gumshoe. Processing the scene. You the attorney? Yes, I suppose I am. Well, come in. I ain't got all day. He points from the window to the bunk. Suspect entered here, then secured the victim to his bunk there. And then we dissolved to the Candlelight Barracks Winchester's room at night. Fantasy. It's quiet, dark, only a shaft of light from outside. The window slides open and a shadowy figure sneaks in. The glimpses we see suggest that it's Rainbow Dash. Using the horse tack from the stadium, the straps, bridles, etc., she secures Windshear to his bunk. He snores away. We dissolve to another fantasy of the morning. Frantic Windshear has managed to free himself from the tack, but when he goes to the door, it's sealed shut with an unknown substance. He races to the window, but dozens of pencils are wedged into it and doesn't budge. That makes no sense, but go with it. It's a cartoon. <laughs> it's a cartoon, you guys. <laughs> Candlelight Barracks, Windshear's room, fantasy. Same, pull out, and when she's pounding against the window, he's trapped inside, he cannot get out. Then we dissolve back to reality, where Gumshoe knocks a hoof on the substance around the door. Alfalfa dip, delicious when wet, strong as cement when dry. <laughs> and what about the window? Gumshoe picks up a pencil out of several scattered near the window. He sniffs the lead. Number two, a window stopper. <laughs> this is absurd. <laughs> Clearly something nefarious happened here, but what makes you think it was Rainbow Dash? Gumshoe points at a small piece of uniform that is torn off on a loose nail. A Wonderbolt's uniform. Same is missing from your client. Sapphire Shores? God, that's funny. Gumshoe looks at her like she's crazy. Oh, right, wrong client. She laughs nervously. That's funny. That's really good. Exterior Candlelight Barracks later, Gumshoe and Rarity stand with an elderly pony. This witness claims he saw her flee in the scene. Using her horn, Rarity holds a picture of Rainbow Dash. Are you sure this is the pony you saw that night? Uh, well, now it's awfully hard to say. How about now? She zips the picture past his face. That's her! She was flying somewhere in a big hurry, I'll tell you what. And where exactly did you see her? The elderly pony points to a barracks building to Winshire's room. And Rarity's face is uneasy. She's like, oh no, could there possibly be? Back to the Candlelight Stadium day. The reserves are helping to break down the stadium after the big performance. Rarity interviews two of them. You've served with Rainbow Dash for some time now. Surely you can testify to his sterling character. Does sterling mean guilty? Yeah, no question she did it. Here now, Rainbow Dash is a pony of great integrity, and I refuse to believe she'd be involved with something so sordid. Lady, you don't really know your friend, do you? She'd trample her own mother to get ahead. Well, that does sound like Rainbow Dash. <laughs> But it doesn't mean she could do something like this. The two reserves stop their work. That's pretty good. The two reserves stop their work. Look, ask any pony here. We've all heard her say she'd do anything to fly with the legends. If dad any confession, I don't know what is. They resume their work, leaving Rarity even more shaken. She's starting to doubt Rainbow Dash. Candlelight Stadium later, Rarity interviews the concessionaire, the worker, and the journalist who Rainbow Dash infuriated the previous day. I'm only asking questions. I'm not accusing you of anything. Good, because we didn't do nothing. I don't know why they all talk like they're from Brooklyn. But... <laughs> of course not, to, to the concessionaire. You, sir, what became of your alfalfa dip after the incident? We dissolve to another fantasy of the stadium. The concessionaire, furious, climbs out of the dip. I threw it out. I can't serve food once I've been in it. In a huff, he drops the giant tub near some garbage cans. And you? Can you account for that gorgeous full grain leather tack Rainbow Dash asked you to move? We dissolve to another fantasy. I raid the worker, picks up the tack, and hauls it away. I moved it to the VIP area, which is where I was taking it anyway before your friend threatened to get me fired. And those number two pencils, how did they end up at the crime scene? Another fantasy. Rainbow Dash buzzes the journalist, who slams into the others like bowling pins and pencils fly everywhere. There were pencils everywhere after that, what that menace did. She could have come back later and taken them all. <laughs> it's not looking good for Rainbow Dash, you guys. <laughs> we dissolve back to the stadium. Present uh, reality. Is that it? Can we go now? Yes, of course. Thank you for your candor. 
They angrily exit, Rainbow Dad, uh, Rarity takes a deep sigh. She looks incredibly worried. We're back at the brig in the yard later. Rainbow Dash walks inside a... <laughs> Rainbow Dash walks in a circle inside a horse exercise. <laughs> you know those things where they, they can only walk like this? She's miserable. Rarity is overwhelmed. I checked out your alibi and there was some pony who saw you. That's great! Flying away from Winchia's room. Oh. I've also interviewed witnesses and it seems there are quite a few ponies that might have wanted to frame you. That's great! But the trial's tomorrow, and I don't have time to investigate all three. Three? Ha! There must be hundreds of ponies who want to take me down. Gilda, lightning dust, that guy I knocked over at the gala, don't forget him. There are lots of ponies at the gala who weren't too happy with me. Then we time-lapse, and she just keeps talking and talking and talking. Then there's that falcon from my pet contest, a bunch of ponies from flight camp, delegates from the cities that lost the games to Crystal Empire, another time-lapse. Discord, that guy never liked me. The entire town of Appaloosa. Oh, and Sweetie Belle. Sweetie Belle? Yeah, we've got a little history. <laughs> but how could you have upset so many ponies, Rainbow Dash? Yeah, now that I list them all like that, it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> we simply don't have time to rule out the other suspects. Our only hope is to prove it couldn't have been you. Yeah, do that! <laughs> but it's just not possible. They have an airtight case. Rainbow Dash stops walking and looks Rarity in the eye. I know you can do it, Rarity. I believe in you, even if you don't. They share a meaningful smile. See, I would have cut the first one, now that I know they've said that twice. I was redoing the script. Uh, I, don't, I believe in you, even if you don't. They share a meaningful smile. Rainbow Dash's faith seems to re-energize Rarity. She makes a dramatic declaration. I won't let them take your dreams from you, Rainbow Dash. I'll work straight through the night if that's what it takes to prove your innocence. And we cut to the salon. Or two stylists are working out there. Covers on her eyes. Practicing law is so stressful. The stylist says, You poor dear, don't you worry about a thing. After we're finished, you'll be ready to win any case in Canterbot. Rarity takes a deep breath. I just don't know what to do. Rainbow Dash would never do something like this, but the evidence is so strong. Stylist number two, maybe you've got to look closer. Sometimes a blonde really is a blonde. Usually, she's just a filly with a good stylist. The stylist laugh. Rarity, however, is struck by these words. She sits up urgently. The cucumber's falling from her eyes. Her wheels are spinning. Back to the candlelight break at night. Rarity enters, buzzing with energy. Rainbow Dash! Rainbow Dash! Rainbow Dash comes to the door of her cell. Yeah? I was talking to the ladies at the salon, and there's something about the evidence that doesn't add up. You were talking to the ladies? At the salon? <laughs> My hovercurist said something that really struck me. She said sometimes a blonde isn't a blonde. You went to the salon the night before my trial? Hey, emotional confrontation hours are over. <laughs> Rainbow Dash, listen. I've dreamed of flying with the Wonder Bowl since the day I was born. It means everything to me. The guard comes over. Don't make me tell you again. I trusted you, Rarity. I needed you. Tears are forming her eyes. She shakes her head and turns away. Rainbow Dash, please, don't bother coming to the trial tomorrow. If this is all I mean to you, I'd rather just go it alone. But, but, Rainbow Dash recedes into the shadows. Emotional confrontation hours start at 10 tomorrow if you'd like to. <laughs> Races off. Hey! Fade out. More gag. <laughs> now we're into my favorite part of it. My memory is, I like the third act a lot. So we're in the final act here. Fade into the courtroom. The courtroom is packed. A stern judge sits on high, and the unicorn prosecutor, due process. That's a great pony name. Due process, the prosecutor. <laughs> Sitting alone and afraid at the defense table. Alone and afraid at the defense table is Rainbow Dash. Your Honor, the case is simple. The defendant, blinded by ambition, trapped one of Equestria's most revered citizens in his room so she could fly in his place at yesterday's parade of legends. Rainbow Dash cowers as the entire gallery, including Winshear, glares at her. For this act of cowardice and disrespect, we are asking for a lifetime ban from the Wonderbolts. A murmur of approval from the gallery. Satisfied, due process sits. Ms. Dash, where is your representative? Uh, I'll be representing myself, Your Honor. Very well, proceed. She's really nervous, super nervous. Like, you cannot do Sonic Rainbow kind of nervous. I, uh, she looks around. There's not a single friendly face. I don't really know what to say except that I didn't do it. Murmurs of disapproval. She sheepishly sits. It's not looking good. Shh. We're in the courtroom later. Due process stands before the witness stand where he's examining Detective Gumshoe. So let me see if I understand. 
A witness places her outside the victim's room. A scrap of her uniform is found at the crime scene. And she has no alibi? Correct. A roommate, the only other pony you saw that night, didn't even bother to show up today. Rainbow Dash cringes, the sting of the fight still fresh. Thank you, Detective. Rainbow Dash slinks lower behind the defense table. Courtroom later, a series of witnesses on the stand. She says stuff like that all the time, Dissolve. I'm the best flyer in Equestria, Dissolve. I'm a way better flyer than you, Dissolve. I'd do anything to fly with the Legends. And now we see it's Rainbow Dash cross-examining. I would do anything to fly with them, anything in the world. What's wrong with that? Gasp from the gallery. She's not helping herself. <laughs> Rainbow Dash realizes her mistake. Well, not anything. Actually, those were your exact words, anything. She opens her mouth to retort, then notices the stern look from the judge and the smug look from the prosecutor. She slumps, her chances rapidly slipping away. All I've ever wanted was to be a Wonderbolt. I love those old flyers. I grew up wanting to be just like them. Now she's getting tears in her eyes. I'd do anything to fly with them, but I'd never do that. She trudges back to her table. Somehow using flash animation, we see a pony who is alone. <laughs> Probably the best paragraph I've ever written. <laughs> Somehow, using flash animation, we see a pony who is alone, whose dreams are evaporating before her very eyes. Wow. <laughs> Back in the courtroom, due process puts the finishing touches on his case. And so, Your Honor, as we have proven here today, he casts an accusing hoof of Rainbow Dash, the defendant <laughs> is guilty of these charges and deserves to be banned from the Wonder Bolts for the rest of her life. He walks back to the prosecutor's table. Those are high stakes, you guys. I rest my case. Whispers from the gallery. As the defense has made no real attempt to refute the charges, I think I'm ready to make my ruling. Rainbow Dash has never looked so helpless in all her life. Rainbow Dash, I am afraid I have no choice but to find you and the door is kicked open. Stop the presses! <laughs> Rarity enters, dressed head to toe in his sleek pink suit. Oh. Legally blonde, baby! <laughs> She's, she's flanked by the stylist from the Canterlox Beauty Salon. <laughs> stop the presses. This isn't a newspaper. <laughs> Rarity struts up the aisle to the defense table. Then stop whatever this is. I'd like to confer with my client. I'm not her client. Please, Rainbow Dash. I know it's hard to hear after last night, but you've got to trust me. Rainbow Dash scowls but says nothing. Rarity steps in front of the judge, brimming with theatricality. Your Honor, I'd like to call my first witness. The one and only Sapphire Shores! Oh, Lights oh, dim, the disco oh, ball starts to spin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sapphire Shores enters with full diva music playing and does a sassy strut to the witness stand. <laughs> the gallery goes insane, screaming and wide eyed for the musical star. <laughs> Rarity, what are you doing? Order! Order! The judge bags his gavel, and the lighting returns to normal in the courtroom. <laughs> we love you, Sapphire! I love you too, y'all! <laughs> Your Honor, what relevance does the fabulous Sapphire Shores have to these proceedings? <laughs> That's a great line. <laughs> relevance? No relevance, but some much-needed drama, don't you think? <laughs> this is a great scene. Rainbow Dash drops her head to the table. As much as I love this piece of music, and would like to get her to autograph my daughter, her testimony is clearly not relevant to this case, and I'm going to proceed with my ruling. He raises his gavel to pound Rainbow Dash's dreams of joining the Wonder Bolts into oblivion. Wait, Your Honor. The future of one of my very best friends is on the line. Won't you let me call just one relevant witness? <laughs> Her whole plan is just to call an irrelevant witness for his <laughs> Judge eyes her sternly. Very well. Sapphire Shore struts back to the gallery, giving Rarity a high hook. Go get him, girl. Your Honor, the defense calls. Wind shear to the stand. The gallery erupts again. How long are we going to make a, let this fashionista make a mockery of this court? One witness, Your Honor. Sometimes you have to brush the mane to find the kinks. The stylist nods sagely. That's right. I'll allow it, Mr. Shear. Windshear can barely disguise his contempt as he trudges to the witness stand, ducked out in his full uniform. Rainbow Dash, haven't you had enough time in the spotlight? Now you're going to humiliate one of the greatest flyers in history? 
I'm not going to humiliate any pony. I'm going to prove you innocent. <laughs> Proceed, counselor. She steps forward. Windshear is beyond intimidating. Uh, how are you today, Mr. Shear? Just lovely. Yourself? The gallery laughs. Rarity's flustered. She's kind of losing it a little bit here. Uh, I'd like to ask you a question about the Wonderbolt uniforms. Then maybe you'd like to bring Sapphire Shores back up here. The gallery laughs again. The silk in your performance uniforms are made from uh, the silk your performance uniforms are made from is only produced here in Cantalat, isn't that right? If you say so. And instead of ordinary silkworms, it's made from incredibly rare milkworms whose silk is waterproof. Lady, did you call me up here to talk about worms and fashion? Because I don't know which is more meaningless. Rarity's eyes harden at the insult to her vocation. Fashion is not meaningless. <laughs> what is the point, counselor? She locks eyes with her stylus and Sapphire Shores then looks at poor Rainbow Dash, who is living her worst day. <laughs> My point, Your Honor, is sometimes a blonde isn't really a blonde, and silk isn't always a silk. <laughs> I think we've seen enough, Judge. You framed Rainbow Dash, didn't you? At Windshear, the gallery erupts, the judge bangs his gavel. Order, order! You sabotage yourself, isn't that right? You don't have to answer that. No, I'll answer it. <laughs> a hush falls over the courtroom. Lady, we live in a world of clouds. Clouds. <laughs> Jack Nicholson. <laughs> Lady, we live in a world of clouds. Clouds and wind and sky and flight. You sit there with your horn in the air and talk about stitching of fabrics and other meaningless things, but where I fly, where the Wonderbolts fly, we have records. And those records mean something. He starts to cough just as he did in Act One. Rarity fumes. What's the matter? Need a drink? She magics a pitcher of water off the defense table and splashes it all over him. The courtroom erupts, the gavel bangs. He sits there, furious, dripping water. That is quite enough! You sniveling little. Curious. Your uniform didn't shrink. It must be made from milkworm silk. She levitates Rainbow Dash's uniform off the prosecutor's table and tosses it into the puddle, and it instantly shrinks dramatically because it's a cartoon. <laughs> Reserve's uniforms aren't made from milkworm silk. They're made from cheaper silk that shrinks when wet. What's your point? She magics a scrap into the puddle. It doesn't shrink. It seems the scrap in your room didn't come from a Reserve's uniform, did it, Mr. Shear? Witcher grinds his teeth. He's furious. So I'll ask you again. Did you frame Rainbow Dash? I did what I had to do. Did you frame Rainbow Dash? You bet your horn I did. That snot-nosed little punk is gonna break my record. I worked my whole life for that record, and I'm not I'm never give it up to some pony as arrogant as her. Chaos in the courtroom. Rainbow Dash is slack jawed. Your Honor, I demand a recess. Overruled. I saw the way she treated those ponies at the stadium. I saw her tear a uniform showing off in front of me. We dissolved to a bunch of fantasy sequences of what actually happened. When she watches Rainbow Dash do his trick, she doesn't notice her uniform snag and a small piece tear off. Later, he takes the discarded bowl of alfalfa dip from near the trash, swipes the horse tack, and then he scoops up the pencils. That night in his room, he tests the window, which is jammed tight. He tries the door, and the alfalfa dip is already set, making it impossible to move. He tears the small piece from his own uniform and plants it near his bed, then lay down, lays down and straps himself in. We dissolve the courtroom back to reality. Guards have arrived now to take him away. I know what I did was wrong, but she was going to steal my legacy. They just want to put me out to pasture. Your Honor, this is an outrage. You just let a fashion designer insult a decorated member of the Wonderbolts. As Rarity passes by, she says, What's the matter, Mr. Prosecutor? Oh. Flips her vein. Can't handle the truth. That is like... That's a Rarity hero moment right there. <laughs> She embraces Rainbow Dash with tears in her eyes. You did it! I can't believe it! I knew you were innocent. I just needed to prove it. It took going to the salon to clear my mind. I'm so sorry I doubted you, Rarity. It'll never happen again. As they take Windshear away, he passes by Rainbow Dash. <laughs> Listen, kid, I'm sorry. What I did, it's unbecoming a Wonderbolt. I hope someday you do break that record. I don't deserve to hold it. There's a beat where Rainbow Dash is unreadable. Then, with immense dignity, she salutes. He salutes back. That's a moment right there. <laughs> then the guards haul him off. We did it! And another happy dance. <laughs> That's the rest of their boots go like this. Yeah. <laughs> We're back on the Candlelight Express. The train approaches Ponyville Station. What a weekend. Tell me about it. I'm going to be a different pony after this experience. 
It's time to make a real effort to keep my ego in check. Here, here. But the most important thing I learned, never stop believing in your friends. I can't believe I doubted you, Rarity, I'm sorry. Let us never speak of it again. So we're not telling the others? Rarity smiles and they hug. Aww. Back at the train station, Ra Rainbow Dash and Rarity exit the train, but the other four wait with their luggage. Hi girls, how was your weekend? Rainbow Dash and Rarity exchange a knowing look. Uneventful, <laughs> dreadfully boring. And you, were the hot springs as relaxing as advertised? The six best friends turn and start to walk away from camera. It was amazing. I feel rested and rejuvenated and more relaxed than I have in years. Boom! Pinkie Pie's suitcase explodes in confetti. Tim Twilight screams and jumps into Fluttershy's arms. And everybody laughs and we fade out. We can do a Q&A part now. Is there a microphone? It is, is amazing how fast that goes without the commercials. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I can tell you the reason that, that I yeah. think they changed from this to the other one is they wanted to do all that film noir stuff. <laughs> I think that's why I would All right, so we've got a mic set up right here in this aisle. On the right, uh, people wearing nice $9.99 nice shirts first. Yeah. <laughs> So, if you have questions, comments, or abuse, do feel free to line up. This is 12.15, right? We have about 15 minutes, is that right? We have, we have all the time. As much as I would love to lecture you on military versus criminal justice and <laughs> legal jurisprudence. Uh, Alright, Andy. Yeah, I got a question. No, 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 sir. Yes, sir. I'm like, uh, curious if there are other things that you pitched over and over and over and over and over again, and they they didn't say yes. Yes. I'm mending fences. I tried to I tried to do that a bunch of times. Yeah. I couldn't get any traction with it until I was the one who decided. And then I was like, oh, I'll do that one. I like that one. <laughs> um, those are the this one and that one are the two that I really tried multiple times to do. Um, I had, a, I had one I liked where, in season five, we were trying to figure out what it actually meant for Twilight to be a princess. And so I was going to do one where she needed her own royal guard. And we, we learned that Big Macintosh has always had dreams of being the royal guard. So she takes him in, but he's really bad at it. And so it's this con she doesn't know what to do, because she doesn't want to upset her you know, one of her best friends, Applejack. But he's really bad at it, so... Yeah, get in the line. Yeah, so sure. Yes. One's more of a comment than a question, but the other is. Um, no, I did love the uh, Phoenix go. Wright courtroom. Uh, the courtroom. Uh, I'll be back in 10 minutes. Reference you did. And second of all, how long did this take for you to write? Because trust me, my ship fix has to take way longer than this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's true. You probably all got written one yourselves. You do various versions, there's an outline first and then the script, but this was pretty quick because I really had so much fun with Rarity and Legally Blonde and uh, I love Rarity, she's my favorite character, so this was pretty quick. A lot of the, the, the business of like, oh, the, the piece of fabric and the pen, the stuff that doesn't really matter, that took a long time to, you know, figure out, but it doesn't matter anyways. The point is the friendship between the two of them. How dare you show up without wings? All right. <laughs> All right. Well, this is kind of off topic, but uh, what was the message you were trying to send to the fans with uh, fame and misfortune? I wasn't sending any message. That was not my idea. Uh, I was forced to write that word. I tried to turn it into something I liked, and I was shot down, so. What was the lesson? What's that? What was the lesson? Behind what was the lesson? Yeah, that they wanted it to be. Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> uh, the problem I had with that episode, I kept saying, "Who's learning the lesson?" I don't understand what the lesson is. And they said the lesson is. Who's, they said the main six are learning the lesson. And I said, "What are they learning? They didn't do anything wrong." And the lesson they were learning is sometimes when you put yourself out there publicly, it can backfire on you. And I said, "Well, that's a horrendous lesson to teach kids." And they said, "Well, write it." So, there you go. 
keep your heads down and buy our toys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> First off, thank you for coming. So I know that at conventions, people like to come up and pitch you ideas. What's the craziest idea somebody's pitched to you? G-rated. Well, usually the crazy ones are so... Uh, uh, they're OCs, and I don't know what the OCs are all about, and it's just really incredibly complicated. It would take like six hours to actually tell the story they're telling me. Um, it's like an epic Lord of the Rings style <laughs> trilogy. Um, those are the craziest ones, because I'm like, what, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I couldn't say specifically. That, yeah, it doesn't happen as often as you, you'd expect. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Um, real quick, this is my actual question, but I, I'm only asking this because it feels like something you might have actually wanted to do. I, I just want to ask, in that uh, script when writing, was there ever a time when you were hoping you could include, like, when the, the suit shrinks during the court scene, a uh, line where Rarity says, and if the suit don't fit, you must quit? <laughs> That would have gotten the episode. In. <laughs> but, but I wanted to ask, um, it, uh, how, is it um, when writing the episode? Do you like um, working it around like the morals and stuff, or do you ever make them? It does it feel more shoehorned in and like something that you didn't always want to include, but you know you have to because of this type, the type of show it is. I always think it comes out of, uh, I try to start from like, what's funny? Rarity is the least competent person to defend Rainbow Dash. <laughs> out of the whole main six. Even Flutter could do a better job than Rarity. <laughs> She's the worst possible person to be in this, pony to be in this position. So that's where I started from. And then, what's funny? How can I make this funny? And then the, all the character stuff comes out of the story. Because you, you, you know, Rainbow Dash believes in her first. Rarity does something that Rainbow Dash thinks is kind of a betrayal, and it is, but it ends up saving the day. So it's all about the two of them believing in each other, doubting each other, and that stuff kind of comes out along the way. That's what I loved about this story was, that stuff's built into the story, is the character elements of it. Um, so, and, and things like Slice of Life, you know, it's a big, silly joke fest. That's all it is. But at the end, what the mayor starts saying, and when the fireworks go off, it's like, oh, this all actually did mean something. Um, so I, I love that stuff, and hopefully it comes out of the story. Uh, well, thank you very much. Thanks. <coughs> hey. Uh, so first of all, thank you for the crossover of Legally Blonde, Patton, and a few good men that I never knew I needed in my life. <laughs> um, so when you do references like this, do you think it inspires the younger kids and generations that have no clue about these movies to further investigate or find out where the references are panning to? I don't know. I mean, I think about like when I would watch Bugs Bunny and there was Humphrey Bogart was there and I didn't know who that was. And it, I, I don't know if it inspired me to look. It, what it did was when I watch it now, I'm like, oh, that's very clever. <laughs> so if a kid watched this, I don't, they wouldn't know what Legally Blonde is, but the parent would. Um, so I don't know. I, don't, I, I suspect they wouldn't pick up on any of that stuff, but it doesn't matter. They're still enjoying their ponies in the courtroom. <laughs> Maybe they're not. <laughs> it's a love courtroom, right? Also, can we get a bend and snap rarity music video? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. uh, this is less of a question, more of a request. Uh, I've been coming here for four years now, and for three of those years, you have been here. The nice. first year I was here, I got you to sign a toothbrush. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. <laughs> All the other years, I've seen people with little yays on their hands. I have in my hands right here an industrial strength permanent marker. Oh, gosh. Will you sign this in my hand right now? Are you serious? Yes. If you want it. <laughs> A serious marker, you guys. I'm pretty sure I saw a tattoo parlor down in the Inner Harbor. Oh, no. The joke's on him, I spelled yay wrong. 
Alright, come on up. Didn't you spell it backwards? I spelled it backwards. First, I just wanted to say that you are not at all like I pictured, because I pictured that you'd be some faceless evil corporation. Not, not, not someone that... So, um, yeah, I've got the, uh, the crumpled up things from the Harry Potter Mad Libs oh, thing, wow. if you'd sign this. Sure. Yes. Come on up, we've got a few minutes left. Should be just enough time to get everybody in. Actually, I actually have um, a couple of questions, but I think you can only take one at the moment. Um, I heard from one of Josh Scorcher's videos that um, it was an interview where you said um, that the episode Fame and Misfortune is not how you really feel about the fandom, and that if you wanted to get a good example of that, you, we should go look at the episode Slice of Life. That's exactly right. And um, my question for you is, would you consider the episode Fame and Misfortune to be the opposite of the episode Slice of Life? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think it's really mean-spirited. I think it's, uh, I don't, I don't understand why we would want to take these towns ponies that we've come to know and love for seven seasons and just make them be jerks for the whole time. That's not what it's about. The slice of life is what it's about. You know? It's the love. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say, um, I'm, I'm in love with you, Sterling. I enjoy writing the script, making my own fan animation, also writing my own script after fan fiction, my own movie ideas. Um, first of all, I just want to ask you one secretly question that we all want to know about filmmaking. Uh, what is the secret of writing a great storytelling and a character and all these kind of Comedies going on, uh, make think uh, you know very enjoyable to to the audience. You know. Yeah, I wish I did. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what. This is kind of interesting to read this because there's stuff in, like I wrote this obviously, but there's stuff in here that I read and I, it makes me laugh. That just makes me laugh, and I think that's what you want. You want to somehow surprise yourself. Uh, I've said this before, but when I'm writing one of these scripts, I'm trying to surprise myself, which is weird since my hands type. I don't know how to type. I type like this. Um, but it happens, like when in Kingdom Hearts Chronicles, after Pinkie Pie's rock farm flashback, come back to the present, she says, that's how Equestria was made. And it's, I wrote that, and I was like, oh my god, that's so funny. That's funny. Which is weird, because I wrote it, but it would surprise me. And I think that's what you need to do, is surprise yourself. There's stuff in here that surprised me, and it made me laugh. Then it made you laugh, you know? So. And that's the best way. If you make yourself laugh, somebody else is going to laugh too. But that's comedy. I don't know about the rest of it. <laughs> sure. Go for it. Oh! Hey, okay? yeah, buddy. Please don't you. <laughs> Go ahead. So, uh, for episodes with songs in them, or Magical Mystery Cure, who writes the lyrics to the songs? Is it you or is it uh, Ingrid? It's, uh, thank you. I should just say it's Ingram because I wrote like the worst lyrics in the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> My first song on the um, Peter Mark Chronicles Fluttershy song, the lyrics are so bad. They're so bad. Uh, so I wrote all those. But he wrote a fantastic song to go with them. I wrote the uh, Flint Clan Brothers lyrics. Yeah! And he puts the amazing songs. Um, it kind of varies, you know, like he usually. They've tended to change more and more over the years. I think when Lauren was on the show, they sort of stayed with what we wrote. And now that she's gone, he ch ch changes them a bit more. Um, sometimes the circumstances change, like Magic Mystery Cure. Um, I wrote four or five songs that didn't get into the show, but circumstances changed. So it's kind of half and half, I think. You know, it varies. So an episode like uh, MMC, would that be like you uh, make all the setup for the songs, and uh, someone like Ingram comes in and makes the lyrics um, fit better. Or yeah, he does all the music, and usually the changes are for that for cadence, so that it makes sense. But sometimes the song will change entirely, um, like that episode. 
Cadence like rhythm, not, not the Yeah, not the princess. <laughs> the musical cadence. Okay, well, thank you. Sure. All right, so uh, when you were uh, narrating, there was a, a specific line from uh, Rainbow Dash, where she's saying, uh, I'll be like the very responsible and everybody will remember my name. But uh, she's also part of the, you know, the elements of harmony who also saved the world, uh, you know, multiple times over. Uh, how are the Matrix not as, you know, more recognizable uh, to the average uh, opponent than? Uh, <laughs> there are so few stained glass window aficionados in a question. We just don't. We just don't talk about that. <laughs> It would, it would change the DNA of the show if they were super famous, you know what I mean? The, the, you gotta have some aspirations and dreams. That's why it was always tricky to me when they started to achieve their dreams, because you don't want them to achieve their dreams. <laughs> That's why the, this, this Rainbow Dash is pretty good, because you can put her in the reserves, which is just a little step forward, or she can meet them like she did in um, Sonic Rain Boom, and it's just a tiny little step forward. It's just, you can give her little bits along the way, but once they achieve their dreams, then then it's like, now what? <laughs> Everybody in question knows them. Now what? It's not the same show then. So I think, yes, that you're absolutely right. Everybody would know them, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> Nobody knows them. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Paul. All right. Um, all, uh, everyone should get their M.A. Larson autographs tattooed aside, <laughs> and all gack jokes aside. Do you think they'll bring you back for episode 200? And if not, do you think they can at least put your commercials in so people can buy your books? <laughs> <laughs> the good news is, you can buy my books without the commercials. <laughs> you can do it right now. On Amazon. On Amazon, Penny Royal Academy series. Um, episode 200 is already written. It's a long time in the, in the it takes like a year or so, maybe a bit more, between when the script is written and when it gets on the air. So no. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. I wrote the hundredth. Watch that one again. <laughs> Watch it twice, same thing. And I really like that episode. It came out so good. Oh, yes. <laughs> I was right in my wheelhouse. One of my favorite moments in that episode is, it's slightly mean-spirited, but it's okay, is uh, when the wedding's about to start and the mayor is like, is everyone here? And Derby slams the door on the main stage. It's like, yeah. And they're racing and I love that. Because that's not, the, you know, the point is that everybody matters. So anyways, is that it? That's it. <laughs>